a story of love and strength in the face of devastating news. Our lead national correspondent, David Begna, recently visited a man from South Louisiana who was diagnosed with a fast-growing and aggressive brain cancer six years ago. Doctors told him he didn't have long, but so far, and he's not taking this for granted, he's beaten the odds. And David joins us. So, oh, wow. Good morning, David. Good morning. Got to go back home to tell this one. Mm. Really. If you have ever been diagnosed with a life-threatening illness or you know someone who has, you know that one of the first questions you want to know is, who's beaten it? Who are they? What is their story? That hope is this story. John Bienvenu was 28 years old with an eight-month-old child when all the certainty he had in life vanished. So before I went into surgery, they said, this could be it, you know. This could be the, the time that I leave this earth. Surgeons had rushed to remove a lemon-sized glioblastoma brain tumor. And they confirmed, they said, this is stage four glioblastoma. People usually live three to six months and waking up from the surgery and having my son, eight month old, put on my lap and he looked me in the eyes and he was smiling and I looked at him and I decided right there, I wanted to show him how to live. He said, from now on, there's no bad days. With his wife, Leslie, who he met when they were kids, they decided that even chemotherapy and radiation treatments were not going to stop them from living as if every day is a special occasion. So when the medical world, the science world tells you, good enjoy luck. your life, good luck, but there's not much hope in it, we shifted that hope into our faith life. Paint that picture for me of how this family was just like, we gonna do whatever we can to be together. <laughs> Every weekend was, was dinner at my parents or even Week just days. in the afternoons. It was definitely a loving time. Having grown up in Louisiana, I've known about the Bienvenu family for most Whatever of my life. Say, Melissa sort of is John's mother. It's a story of hope, it's a story of love, and it's a story of faith. It is also a story about learning for John's father, Jimmy, and John's brother, James. You see, both are doctors, and they knew John had little chance of beating the odds. I remember when John asked me, it, so like, like, how do people die from this? It's like not a conversation you want to have with your brother, ever. Here, here. Thank you. Yet this tight-knit family still found reasons to celebrate. They went to North Carolina to mark the end of John's radiation treatments, three months after he was diagnosed. It was his 29th birthday. And I remember taking a picture of that cake, thinking that that would be his last birthday cake. The results of a scan five months later indicated that might be true. My dad gets a text on his cell phone and I see tears coming out of his eyes and he walks out. It's my older brother and he started crying. And that's when he told me. It was my brother who said, you know, three more tumors. So everything that the doctors told us was gonna happen, that he was gonna have a reoccurrence, it was happening. That's whenever we pretty much signed up for Gamma Knife for them to take out their remaining. That was like our Hail Mary shot. And I remember that day we thought, this is it. This is it. And John was just saying that he didn't have fear at that time. You didn't feel fear in that moment? I didn't. Six months, we had dealt with it. It's not that I was used to it, but I was prepared. He prepared to die by living very simply. We have been to places that we had never been before, and I've talked to people who I've always loved so much, and I've, I've apologized to people who things weren't as I want them to be. We always say that that first year after he was diagnosed, we were living a, a bucket list life. And our bucket list didn't look like skydiving or taking a European backpacking trip or scuba diving. We planted a garden. We got chickens. And it's been that way for six years. How you been? Get it? How, How you, have you been? been? Because at least for now, John yes. Bienvenu has beaten the odds. And we take bike rides all the time. And those things were our bucket list, which sounds ridiculous, but it was just the simplicity of living a simple but really beautiful life. And our little boy feels that. He traded his comfortable desk job as a vice president for a development company for a job outdoors as a landscaper. I love it. I love being outside and putting my hands in the dirt. 
The results of more than three dozen brain scans show no cancer. We still live as if everything could change tomorrow because we know it can. And even now with our little boy being six, he is involved in those tough conversations with us sometimes. So you chose to tell him? Yeah. It's not like he fears, he doesn't fear death. He just thinks of it as a part of life. I love you too, brother. And you know, the lessons learned extend to the adults in the family too. How have you used his story in your practice? I use it pretty frequently. 90% uh, of my practice is oncology based. I give people bad news all the time. Has there been a moment where someone felt hopeless? and needed to hear something. And that was the story that you told them. Sure, and I say, listen, glioblastoma has a 13 month median survival. And uh, my brother's here five or six years later. So you just need to focus on you, your family, the day to day, this is gonna be a grind and we're gonna do everything we can. When the Bienvenue family celebrated the 4th of July this year, the gratitude they shared was infectious. They know they are among the most fortunate family to still have John, because only 5% of people diagnosed with glioblastoma survive even five years and get this chance to just live. What is your purpose now? I ask Leslie that every day. <laughs> I think my purpose is to show others that love is above all else. If you were to say to him, uh, John, I want you to know, just what would you say to him? And you could say it to him. I want you to know that you've given me the most beautiful life I could imagine. I want you to know that the life that you've given me and the son that you've given me and the strength you've taken away, worrying, you always tell me, you said, no matter what, we're still together. It's been 23 years and we're still together. I love you no matter what. Oof, David, that is a powerful story, my goodness. So the doctors can be wrong, that's one lesson. You can beat the odds, and I think embedded within that lesson is the fact that the difference maker can be faith and family. Mm -hmm. Amen, you hit the nail and on the And love. Head. I like to say there are members of the So What Club, right? Oh, I'm having a problem at work with an employee that I, I just can't forget about, so what? Oh, my kid got in a fight with a kid next door. So what? Mm. Nothing else seemingly matters when you are looking at six months left to live. Yeah. I have to ask you about that conversation with their son. I, do you have any idea what that went like? It surprised me how honest they've been, mm. right? And again, we dance around what we would tell kids and our kids right. old enough to handle it. Mm -hmm. At the end of the day, you can let them watch you suffer, or you can let them know as you go along. And this is a family living life, holding hands, the three of them doing everything together. It reminds me of that Tim McGraw song, Live Like You Were Dying. Oh, yeah. I thought about that when we were writing this. Yeah. They are living like they're dying, living in, loudly. Living loudly, in present time, feeling every moment. Amen. A lesson that we can all learn from. Yeah. Incredibly powerful story. David Begno, thank you very Thanks, much. Thanks,